Do you ever look at someone and wonder what is going on inside their car? Hello, I'm Driver Worm. Good morning, how are you? We're Driver Worms. We're interested in cars. We're not real drivers, but we are real worms. We are. This is the car, this is the track, and this is your favorite color, Joshua. I know you're watching, I know that you're high, and yes, this is real. You need to listen to me. Can you imagine if your name was Joshua, your favorite color was blue, and you were high watching this? He's probably like outside on his lawn right now, like, like fucking dumping the hose water into his face or something. I guess I took the L there, lost a the viewer. Anyway, we are in qualifying. This is Red Bull Ring. This is our third race this week, and we just couldn't manage to hook up a decent qualifying lap. This is our second qualifying lap out of two, completely whiffing uh, this corner, very important corner there. So we have to hesitate to get onto the throttle in order not to go off track there. Coming out of the final corner, we go a bit too deep, struggle to keep it on track and actually get a little bit of oversteer there. So not the, uh, not the greatest laps for me, and it yielded a 33.1 which was good enough or in this case bad enough for p9 about seven tenths behind david who's in p1 that's car number two all the way at the front lap one starting behind cedric in front of pj and no surprise it's not a great launch for us i'm getting really tired of these terrible launches three wide momentarily cedric falls behind pj taking an extremely narrow line we swing around the outside able to completely open that up carry much much more speed through there and we actually gain one position so we're up into p8 now as we jump cedric and uh we have pj behind us who started in p10 so he jumped cedric as well looking ahead there's a little bit of side by side action car number five a few cars up ahead of us and this is p4 just drives directly off of the track so we swing through there the two cars ahead of me make contact sending car number 10 off there he is now up into p6 and i am now up into p7 uh thank thanks to car number five they're driving off of the track and so already there's been a little bit of mayhem. You can see the guy ahead of me has his bumper completely banged in from um, Leo Duncan or yeah, Leo Duncan, who is now in P5. Uh, they made contact coming around corner three. Looking a little bit further up the road, a slight bit of fighting going on here. Car number six looking to take P4 from car number seven, going into corner seven up the inside, breaking very late, kind of taking up the entirety of the road. I suppose that is the correct way to make a move through turn seven, and he gains that position. We are still being tailed by PJ, who is right on our tail, but coming into corner number nine, and he's going to back off honestly quite a bit give me a lot of room there as we head into the final corner and chasing car number 10 here need to get a good run here as it does lead to a straight and it was okay i suppose luke also had a good run through there luke is a very fast driver um, we actually ended up driving with him a lot this week heading on to lap number two two tenths behind luke and this first corner is similar to that last corner just opposite instead of going from you know high elevation to low elevation you're going from low to high it's really about commitment and um, pushing the track limits which i didn't do there luke keeps himself safe in this situation coming through corner three and getting really close to luke shifting down to first slightly too early and my car gets a little bit loose there behind there are some people driving off the track we're going to reverse and see exactly what's going on with that car number eight or, or a Lightning McQueen looking to make a move up the inside of car number one. So car number one is trying to fight his way through the pack as he did not qualify. Slides out slightly, makes contact with car number one, and they lose some time, but it could have been a lot worse. There is another car now in front of car number one, car number 18 tailing him, so there's potential for a fight here. I mean, these guys are basically touching. One looking to go around the outside into corner four, and he's going to try and send it deep here. Very, very difficult line to make work. I have tried this line multiple i mean probably like dozens of times this week I haven't gotten it to work yet and he doesn't either in that scenario so still behind luke we got pj behind us 0.3 seconds pj is not going anywhere he is also a very fast driver and looking at the gap to leo it's about a second and a half now and that's not luke falling off of them that's me falling off of both of them so by the time lap number four comes around luke is basically on leo i'm i've fallen back slightly i'm probably about a second behind at this point and he is heavily in the slipstream heading into corner four best overtaking opportunity on the track I believe you really want the outside here, but you can make it work around the outside. It's very difficult. You either send it deep and hold it tight, or you look for a switchback, which Luke is going to do in this situation. Just about getting his car there. I would say they're alongside at this point. Wheel to wheel, and he's got the outside now for corner number six, which is 
okay. If you can hold it here, you can get the move done in corner seven around the outside, but car number 11 really, really using as much space as possible. Luke staying on the outside. He just about has it done. He's got the car turned around in time. Not quite going to get on the throttle in time, almost running off of the track limits, and 11 is able to hold it through the inside of corner seven, which is honestly a really difficult corner to hold it on the inside of. You have, I think you were able to carry much more speed going around the outside there as opposed to really having to take that tight line. All of that fighting has allowed us back into it, so we are now only half of a second from Leo, right back on Luke Jarvis's tail as we cross onto lap number five. And we kind of find ourselves in a group of four now with PJ just behind us. I mean, we're only about a second from PJ to Leo, so that's P8 to P5. And Luke gets a really good run there. We actually both gain on Leo through that corner right there. So Luke definitely has the run. He has the slipstream. You can see Leo holding a tight line. They're one tenth away from each other. Leo slowly moves over, opening up the inside. Luke is gonna look to take that. Moves over, but does not uh, commit hard enough on the brakes. We actually end up sending it around the outside and getting side by side with him. Going around the outside there, same thing as corner seven. You're able to open up your steering a lot earlier and get on the throttle. So you have a much better, much better exit opportunity. And we are side by side with him heading into corner four, breaking just just before the 100, as close as I can to the 100, it, it tends to be closer to the 150, and it looks like at first we were going to do it, but we don't quite get it. I think I something I was doing on that corner was opening up my steering too much, as it is a pretty tight corner, so you want to, I mean, look at all that space between the two of us. I think I need to slow down my car slightly more earlier, and then get on the throttle and get a little bit more angle a lot earlier in the corner, which I just wasn't able to put that together. So about a second to Leo, and then uh, Luke and PJ and me are all still very tight with each other. We're gonna skip ahead to lap number nine, where the situation uh, hadn't changed between us. It was really about the fight for the lead. So car number two here being challenged by car number six on the inside. They're gonna go side by side through the first corner. Six doing very well there to um, kind of cut off car number two's exit path and diminish his speed. Car number three is right up in this battle now, though, so it is a three-way battle for the lead six has the inside two has track position slightly ahead going into corner number three around the outside you have a good opportunity here to make it work but it looks like he carries too much speed in slides a little bit as he rejoins he's gonna cut off car number three and they settle into this little line heading into corner four so we've got six at the front after nine laps he started in p3 has now funneled his way up to the front car number two not too happy about that he wants to get as close as he can to this guy gets a little too close and just kind of pushes him a few times actually ends up murdering both of them car number seven trying to find a way through takes out car number three and there are cars all over the place leo duncan collects somebody and we managed to skate through from i think we were start we were in p7 at the beginning of that and now we are up into p3 jumping four cars there so massive moment for us from p7 to p3 and then we've got leo behind pj car number one is beginning to make his way towards the front as well he's able to take advantage of that huge accident and gain a couple of positions still behind luke about four tenths behind luke and nicholas who was in p4 is now leading the race coming through the penultimate corner just about slide out there managed to catch it i have a very narrow entry through the final corner but we managed to keep it on track flipping ahead to lap number 13 so it's an 18 lap race we've only got four more laps left is that correct four, five more laps left including this one and Luke has caught up to Nicholas at the lead so he's looking to challenge him soon he is definitely within slipstream as they head down towards corner number three huge overtaking opportunity here if you can get alongside and it looks like they just might Nicholas taking a defensive line he's got a full car length ahead of him though and that may open up an, a, a switchback for Luke Jarvis I think he looks forward opening up that corner as much as he can getting a good run but it's not quite enough to do it for him he loses a slight bit of speed as he opened that corner up perhaps too much but he did get a really good run so he's directly back onto nicholas's tail moving to the outside for corner number four nicholas all of the way in the lead perhaps looking for a switch back here car number 10 and he's going to end up settling right behind nicholas oh never mind pulling to the outside for the next corner and he is i mean wow he got a fantastic run through there making contact car number 10 car number seven side by side through corner number six heading down towards number seven 10 has to settle behind and this has allowed me back into the fight i'm now within a second of nick half of a second to luke and uh it looks like the gap is falling as nicholas gets a pretty poor run through car through turn number seven and man that, that was just as the we've said this before i'll say it again i'll say it a million times i love being behind a fight in the middle of a race it is the most like enthralling is that or like in like just exciting thing i fucking love watching people battle 
Um, and it also, it always gives me motivation to get up in that motherfucker. And here we are now, three tenths behind Luke, uh, closing onto Nicholas at the same time. And you may notice that the uh, relative has Luke listed as P17. He's not in P17. He's currently in P2. I'm currently in P3. I don't know what race labs is on. Uh, it's just fucking up right now through corner number three and Nicholas goes deep opening up the inside for Luke I'm not quite able to take advantage Nicholas tucking behind Luke so the lead has finally switched Luke up into the lead I'm still in p3 and the top four are all within eight tenths of each other Luke defending into corner number three Nicholas looking to go around the outside he's then going to tuck underneath Luke getting a textbook switch back through that corner and he has got his car alongside barreling towards corner number six they do make contact once and um, Nicholas is going to have to settle back there a little bit. But Luke gets unnerved and his car slides out from under him. Could definitely have to do with the contact they made there. But that is going to put Luke out of contention for the lead of the race as he funnels backwards. Now about four seconds behind us. And we are now into P2 from starting in P9 to P2 really just by virtue of people killing themselves. And I feel like that, I mean, honestly, if you get too feisty on this track, there, there's just so much opportunity to defend that even if you are a faster driver, even if you have better race craft, it can still be very difficult to pass somebody. And depending on how hard they want to defend, there's honestly a pretty good likelihood that you guys end up in an accident. So I was really taking advantage of just trying to ride my races out this week and let people gift me positions. And for the most part, that is how I seem to achieve my highest positions. Now this is lap number 16. We only have, well, there's this lap and two more at the moment. We are half of a second behind Nicholas, PJ half of a second behind us. So there's opportunity to move forward or backwards. Of course, at this point in the race, my focus is purely on Nicholas. I don't even realize that PJ is there. I mean, I am keeping tabs on him, but I'm not letting it affect me whatsoever. I have one direction I'm going and that is directly ahead of me towards Nicholas Taylor looking to get the lead of this race. I notice he's not opening up these corners quite as much as he possibly could be. And I'm willing to bet that has something to do with the reason Luke was able to catch him and why I believe that I will be able to catch him. So through corner six, we're only four tenths away from him. He goes slightly deep through that corner, heading into seven, perhaps goes off track there as well. I think that he does. Three tenths now as we head through corner seven, looking to get on the throttle as early as we can. Not my strongest corner, never was, um, sadly, as that one was pretty damn important on this track. But we're going to stay within slipstream, three tenths behind him, heading through the penultimate corner, breaking just after the 100, taking this curb and trying to push as early as you can. Probably got on the throttle a little bit too late there. You can cut the inside of that final corner a lot more than I did in this instance, which is why he's going to pull away from me slightly. Now, I do have the slipstream, so I'm not too worried about it. However, this is the penultimate lap, so I'm running out of time. I'm aware. I know I need to make a move soon. Coming through corner one, and I get a really good run here. Uh, we were three tenths behind. I believe I got a slightly better run than him through that corner, and the slipstream could possibly help me make a move into this first corner. I've noticed that he leaves a lot of room open on the outside, and whether that is him taking a semi-defensive line or if that's just his racing line, I don't know, but it's going to allow us to get a better run as we take full advantage of opening that corner up and heading down the kind of back straight, I suppose this is. We're only two tenths behind him into corner what is corner number four huge opportunity he's going to move to the inside taking a semi-defensive line once again we're opening it up as much as we possibly can looking to get a better exit than him here i was a bit late to turn in there i want to say i think that was my problem with that corner was i would I, I just never turned in early enough there's camber there that helps you through there through corner number six and he did a similar thing on the last lap where he goes a bit too deep too late through here so i'm starting to see that this is probably his weakest point on the track through corner seven i'm hoping that he's not able to make that up but then i go pretty deep there and yeah he makes that up it's not so much that he made that up but more that i allowed him to uh, just pull away there so crossing on to the final lap i know i need to get something done soon this is a very short track your only real opportunities are corner number three and corner number four so heading towards corner number three at the end of the straight we get a very good run and super important, we're two tenths behind him. He is all of the way with one tire just about in the dirt there. I'm waiting for him to open up the inside, but he never does, so I cut to the outside. He is all of the way tight when he enters this corner, tries to move to the outside or the middle, locks up his tires, and we sling through underneath him. Here's my cockpit view of that. 
Same thing that happened between him and Luke, where he goes to the inside, tries to open it up a little bit too late, locks up his tires, trying to get too much angle and braking at the same time. We cut underneath him for the lead of the race. He is about three tenths behind us, and I make a big fucking mistake here. I mean, from that far back, I did not think he was going to do this. And, I mean, this was a pretty max Verstappen. There was nothing I could have done there. I, as soon as I decided not to defend, it was over because he came absolutely flying through. Had I turned in, I would have died. Both of us would have fucking died. Maybe I should have just let both of us die, but fuck, man. Oh, God. I, I... We're behind him now, right behind him, and he's breaking on the apex. He's, oh, he's, de he's going to defend the fuck out of this. I already know it. Oh, I'm so sad. Oh my god. PJ's right behind us now, so we went from attacking the lead to now, I mean, now possibly losing a position. As long as we have a clean run through these final two corners, we should be good. There's not really too much of an overtaking opportunity here. You have to be a fucking maniac to do something here. And uh, even though we don't get the best run, I mean, PJ is right behind us. He gets a much better run, but it's not going to be enough. The line is too close to the beginning or too close to that final corner. And fuck, man. P2 for us, dropping, I mean, what we were in the lead for a total of like, not even one corner. Anyway, anyway, I'm sorry that you all had to see that. We're gonna reverse to uh, lap number nine. I'm sure you all remember this accident that happened and car number 11 absolutely shipped it into this guy. I just wanted to highlight um, what I was talking about, about like being a slower car and being able to defend on this track. This was a very good example. Okay, this guy's car is fucked up. He just absolutely molested, like, I think that was car number three uh, during that accident, and he gets away. Car number six, who was the leader heading into corner three on, or corner four on this lap, uh, is now behind him. So this is arguably the fastest guy on in this race, right? He was leading, and he's now stuck behind number 11, who has damage. This is lap number 10, right? So we reversed, we reversed quite a bit. And you can't really make a move into this first corner. It's very, very difficult unless you absolutely drive off the other person's exit, which is a fucking bastard move. But car number six did do that to somebody earlier. So it's, I wouldn't put it past him. Up the inside of lap of uh, turn number three and car number six actually gets this one done. I think car number 11, once that happened, he remembers that because we're gonna cover a lot of this guy's race basically until the end of the race so you can see all of the defense that he puts down heading into corner number four and they make slight contact 11's on the outside that contact honestly pushes him wide enough so that he's not able to look for a switchback or hold car number six tight and heading on to lap number 11 now same guy he's being tailed by car number one who if you don't know your car numbers are given to you based on your i rating so this guy should be the fastest guy in the lobby tries to i mean really doesn't allow car number 11 much space there but 11 manages to hang it around the outside there as one tries to go up his inside and then one sends it a bit deep through corner six similar to uh, what nicholas had been doing for a couple of laps except a bit more extreme and 11 takes track position heading into corner number seven they make slight contact there and getting the drive out here he is right behind him still uh, this is lap number 11, okay? Make it a little bit more contact there as 11 holds a semi-defensive line into the penultimate corner, which I don't... I mean, I suppose it could be necessary. I, I just don't think it's smart to go side by side through these final two corners. You lose so much time, and as the overtaking car, it is still extremely difficult to get that move done. So next lap, car number one, kind of teasing a move to the inside. They're not really going for it. Honestly, maybe he should have because 11 was definitely struggling through that corner. You can see just how much time the car number six has gained. 11 defending super heavily now into corner number three, opening that corner back up. And you can tell now he is defending the inside after car number six went up his inside on, I think that was lap number 10. So he is aware of that move now, moving to the inside for, uh, turn number four as well in defending that even though the switchback is feasible here it's still not an easily executable move it's it's a it's still a difficult move on that corner the lines like the elevation change through there is very weird 11 kind of backing him up around the apex and look at everybody getting lined up behind him with car number 19 now at the end of this group i mean what is that it's like one two three six cars in total and he's just like 
he's not letting anybody through. Car number one looking to make a move up the inside. This is typically how that is going to go for you. As upon exit, he's just not able to get the speed. And now he's killed his own speed down the straight. So 11 still maintains the position ahead of him. Now car number nine has a better run than him. Car number one looking up the inside, but 11 still defending it really heavily, actually. Just about going three wide here. Car number one just sniffing up behind them. And now, I mean, look at this fight. Five is up the inside of 12 behind him. And they're going two by two down the straight with 11 still in the lead heading into corner four and uh he's gonna open up this corner for himself car number one and car number nine side by side nine perhaps looking for a switch back as you do on this corner not going to execute that one and uh they settle he settles back behind car number one skipping ahead to lap number 14 the run is once again on into corner number three one he, he honestly probably could have made a move up the inside. I mean, look at this move from car number 12. From downtown, Lando Norris up the inside there. But car number 9 is still able to get a really good exit there. And 1 and 11 still fighting over the lead of this group. Heading into corner number 4. 11 taking a defensive line. Car number 1 looking to go around the outside. He is alongside heading into it. Gets the car turned in in time. The power was not quite there when he needed it, however. And he's going to have to settle behind him. While that was happening, car number 9 and 12 are still going at it side by side through there. Car number 5 actually able to take advantage of that, cutting underneath car number 9. So 9 in those last two corners has, has funneled back two positions. Meanwhile, car number 1 looking up the inside through turn 6, making contact. The space is not afforded there. And once again, he kind of peeks up the inside of 7, but settles behind 11. And through the corner, he's going to make contact again as 11 is hesitating onto the throttle to defend him. You guys can make up your mind about how this defense looks for you. Tucking to the inside pretty late there uh, into uh, the penultimate corner. And one is forced to settle behind him once again. Actually has to go into the pit lane for a penalty because he has too many incident points. Probably from all of those contacts that he's ended up having with car number 11. I think I saw three of them. That, I mean, that's 12 incident points right there and then four off tracks. Meanwhile, five looking up the inside of car number 12. And he's going to get it done into corner one as he had a really, really good run. And 12 backs off. 19 just about goes into 12 there. Manages to keep it clean. Uh, but now the... the um, the story here is going to be between car number five and car number 11. So heading towards corner number three, five looking up the inside, perhaps he's going to get the space there. They very close to each other. No contact though. Great driving. 11 has the outside and it gives you a really good run there. So he's going to tuck back ahead of car number five, heading into corner number four. And as that was happening behind car number 19, almost making a beautiful move up the inside switch back. 12 actually gets loose upon the exit and that's going to give 19 just enough of an advantage to go alongside. Five looking to go around the outside of uh, corner number four as 11 is holding his extremely tight line. Five doing very well there to avoid going into the back of 11 though. Props to him for that. Uh, meanwhile, 19 and 12 were still fighting down into this corner and they go side by side. They end up making contact. 19 up the inside. 12 gets loose. Car number three looking to go around the outside of them, but that evasive maneuver actually kills his speed just enough so he's not able to take advantage of that. Five is still looking to make some Thing happen it's the penultimate lap he's running out of time uh to get past this guy and i mean look ahead there's like this massive gap now as this de defense has just absolutely slowed down this group insanely looking around the outside perhaps for a switch back he does get a decent run arguably better than car number 11's plus the slipstream is going to give him a really good run into corner number four 11 doesn't seem to be breaking quite enough and sure enough there he goes deep car number five underneath him for free taking that position finally so he has fought his way through this group like a madman and 19 is now behind 11 spoilers he doesn't get it we're just going to skip ahead to these guys crossing the line because they finish in this position and i just wanted to highlight that for you guys to show you how easy it is to, or not easy, but how defendable this track is. I need to take lessons as the one move that I had to defend, I didn't. So fuck me, I guess. Here are the results. Ended up crossing the line, as we saw in P2. Gained actually a lot of uh, I rating from that one. This was a, uh, it was a higher strength of field, high issue is 3,100, which is higher than most races now that I, I find myself in. Did lose a little bit of safety rating, nothing major, not upset about it. If you guys enjoyed this video and would like to support me, please check out my channel, some of my other videos, and I'm willing to bet you'll enjoy some of that stuff too.